this 17th century manor house belonged to Newton's family. It's the place where Newton was born, at Woolsthorpe in Lincolnshire. Newton was not necessarily born in the house behind us, but he was born on this site and the house behind us was where he lived for much of his youth. He came back here in the mid-1660s when the plague hit Cambridge. By then he was already interested, uh, through his reading of the work of John Wallace and of Descartes, in calculating infinite series and in working out the area under the hyperbola and other problems that he told us at the end of the 1690s he had worked on in Woolsthorpe and at nearby Boothby in the mid-1660s. To follow those calculations and to see the detail of Newton's working, however, we have to leave Lincolnshire and return to Cambridge University Library, where the waste book that he kept that records that work can now be found. That manuscript is the waste book of Isaac Newton, a, a work which Newton began keeping as a notebook in February 1664. But what he did was reuse paper which had previously been used by his stepfather, Barnabas Smith, to construct a theological commonplace book. So side by side on the same folios, one finds Smith's entries on topics like Deus, God, drawn from contemporary theological literature and the works of the Church Fathers, with Newton's entries responding as a student and as a young scholar in the 1660s to the mathematical and physical reading that he'd been in undertaking in those years, particularly the works of Descartes and of uh, Galileo. And on a number of folios, one can see Newton responding to the ideas of interpreters of Descartes, like Van Scoten and Hudder, developing their insights into how something which we would now call the calculus might work, developing their insights into motion in small uh, infinitesimal units and uh, into the uh, way in which one should measure curves. Uh, this is the origin of Newton's mathematics and the origin uh, manuscript, therefore, of many of Newton's most important thoughts. And it's a manuscript to which later scholars have returned to interpret the growth of Newton's ideas. On some folios, Newton has dated uh, the work that he's carried out. Those dates may have been added uh, later. So, for example, here there's a date of November the 13th 1665. We don't know whether that was written by Newton when he wrote this interpretation of uh, a problem in mathematics uh, which helps him towards the calculus. Uh, but Newton himself later relied on that date, as have subsequent scholars whose work is referenced in pencil on the top of the folio uh, when they tried to write the history of the composition of Newton's most important book, The Principia. In his old age, Newton told a story to his friends about an apple that fell from a tree while he was in the country during the plague. And he claimed that he discovered in a spark of genius universal gravitation by looking at an apple falling to the ground. Now, the manuscripts that we can read in Cambridge do not support this story because the conception of gravity that Newton had and also his mathematics was very different from the mature theory of universal gravitation that Newton developed in the Principia much later. So one of the interesting things about this page is the way in which Newton has laid out a response to a problem. And it looks very much as if Newton is still working perhaps in terms of the teaching or interaction which he has with Isaac Barrow. Uh, also uh, at Trinity, alongside Newton, possibly Newton's teacher in some sense, Lucasian professor of mathematics before Newton. Nevertheless, it's also interesting to note, looking at the manuscript, uh, the way in which Newton uh, is reworking some of his ideas already, presenting texts in order to show uh, the way in which 
uh, a diagram might help uh, a reader to respond to mathematical argument, uh, drawing it up in the manner of a contemporary printed mathematical textbook, so that a woodcut of a diagram might appear alongside the working that goes with it. Later, when Newton came back to this folio in the context of either copying it for circulation amongst his friends or copying it out and setting it in terms of a specific statement of the history of the way in which he'd worked in mathematics, uh, he edited the text in order to remove passages uh, which showed the extent to which, as a young man, he had still been thinking in terms of the writing of people like Huda. He'd still been thinking in terms of the mathematical tradition he was engaging in. And instead, to present the text without those telltale references, without here a third example on the page, but with only two examples, to make it look as if the calculus as it was practiced in the 1690s had sprung suddenly to his mind 30 years earlier. So the second item we have seen is uh, dated 13th November 1665 and uh, it deals with what Newton later called the method of fluxions, what we call the calculus. Uh, the modern reader will immediately recognize the rules of the differential calculus applied to some simple polynomial equations. Uh, nonetheless, Newton's ideas here are different from uh, our ideas because Newton conceives magnitudes as generated by motion. He's interested in what he calls velocities, not, uh, what we, not the derivatives at all. Uh, so um, his uh, ideas are very peculiar of his own age. His ideas, uh, his early ideas on calculus are different from his mature ideas on calculus that he will develop in the 1690s. So uh, here we find uh, Newton very much indebted to Barrow because he, conceived, he conceives magnitudes as generated by motion and indebted to Descartes and uh, Van Schoten's pupils such as Houdet.